Welcome to Puyvidal, a 13th century chateau nestled in the heart of the Charente. Join my mother, my father, my sister, my fiance, and I, an American family, as we move from New York City to California to the southwest of France. This is Dreaming of a Chateau. received at the table, one of the little tables that we'll be using in the West Wing Salon to create a different breakfast area. <laughs> I love your uniform. <laughs> it's nice, it's in your colors. Are you making <laughs> fun of Penelope's Air Force statement. One sweater? Her, her style statement is rebellious protector. Oh, it's Top Gun. I think that's really vibing with that style statement. And her summer color palette. And it's versatile and practical. She's into, what is it called, Penelope? Styles? Color theory, I don't know. What is color, it theor color theory, She's color styles. We're obsessed style. with trying to style us. Personal oh, yeah. style, which is like a liberating and empowering experience. So you don't have to suffer every morning that you get dressed and feel lost every time a new trend comes out. This is true. Or anything like that. You could just achieve a steady flow. Or at least that's what my YouTuber says, and I'm trying to work on her. Yeah, except videos like the video that came out last night happened, and then Julia looks like she's wearing the same thing for like three days in a row. Excuse <laughs> me, look at you! You were wearing the same jacket in all of those scenes. Oh, that's the only thing that's different. Oh, very nice. Some this sister, so some morning sister bonding at the chateau. That's Thank cute. you. Oh, noon. We're giving the impression that we're early risers in the shop. That's very pretty. That's great. Okay. Should we assemble it inside? Let's see. Yeah, I think so. Wow, that's quite rustic. Okay. Hey, I like it. Like the top. Yeah, it's rustic. Really rustic. Oh, um, okay. it doesn't feel great. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's what we got one. Maybe Mama can stain it. Yeah, yeah. it looks a bit cheapy. I just, yeah, I, I wanted this to feel a lot more comfortable. You know, yeah, like, like this isn't comfortable that's like eating off of. Sexy? Yeah. I like, like the size nice. though. I think the size is great. That is nice. You can do two or three people here. Yeah, if you're red, you don't have Starbucks to ha design their, all of their Starbucks is based on a study that people look less alone sitting at round tables. They so do! Like they totally to do! Oh my god! Yeah, no, I agree. So I think, yeah, this definitely is for three. Yeah. You can't fit the whole placemat, but you can fit the... Yeah. Yeah. So this is like the introvert table size. Yeah. So that you can be by yourself, but people mm -hmm. can join you. Ah. You could even have four people sit here if they just have coffee. This is how much we think about the guest experience and the that's business. Why, that's why I think a it's, Yeah, I think it's incredibly important to cater to the introverts who don't want to talk to people before they drink coffee. Let's see if any- okay, so Julia just got off the phone with what she's calling her new crush. I'm in love. She's in love. <laughs> she's only spoken to her new crush two times on the phone, but she's in love. This is, this would be who exactly? Um, this is Samantha. Um, I forgot her last name. She is our color consultant coming tomorrow to visit us from Pharaoh and Ball, Paris. They opened their color consultancy 11 years ago, I believe, and she's been with them doing that since they opened. Um, and so what they do is they send these like color experts that they have on staff in London and in Paris to your home on site to look through every single room in person and they'll help you create an entire cohesive palette. And, and, as much as you may know paint and color, which I think 
I have some affinity for. There's still like this infinite choices to make in terms of like molding and the finishing of molding. For instance, Farrow and Ball does a dead flat finish, which is their most historic kind of 18th century finish, which is lovely because it's like no shine whatsoever. And it really looks like the, the paint chemicals that they used to put in the 18th century, like the chalkiness of the paint. But on the other hand, we're a hospitality space. And um, she was mentioning on the phone already, she's like, we need to find a balance between looking really matte, but then any kind of shine and paint helps protect it from marks and scrapes and stuff. Scuffs, yeah. And it's just, there's like the functionality and the aesthetic and then just understanding what how the color will look in different finishes. And these experts are very used to doing this type of large scale um, palette work um, all at the same time. And she's in a lot of other chateaus and she's very excited for the, the 18th century kind of look that we're going for in the Grand Salon and the bedrooms and then our kind of medieval Renaissance idea on the upper floor. We're also doing Carolina in my apartment and I, I love to have that have some of the 18th century feel, but a bit more modern and just like more functional for us. And then we're also doing that 18th century, even 19th century look in the, the office studio. <clears throat> so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so this is nighttime shenanigans at the Chateau. Penelope takes the entire East West Wing and covers it with her painting job. Well, I'm painting it's my dresser efficient. before I built it. It's quite efficient. So all the way <laughs> at the end, there's... <laughs> like falling. Yeah. Of course, there's... I wasn't told that our color specialist who's coming tomorrow needs to come in this hallway. So now I frantically try to build both dressers so she can walk through the hallway. Oh, I think no. she can sit around. She can around step this. around. This is not her project, Also, this is so. Penelope's project. Look at this. This is the color of her dresser. This is original. It's... Color. It's just a super modern little dresser. And this is the color she chose That's to paint. Really nice. Very nice. nice. Really, really like <sighs> What's the color called? It's the the green. Oh, I love it. Yeah, That's very gonna go nice. With the, even the existing curtains and the wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna go great. Hello. <laughs> Why is one of them like dying? This, but I feel like Molly on the comfy couch. Mm -hmm. It's uh, <laughs> it's a TV show from my youth where um, a raggedy a woman dresses raggedy and type of doll would lie in a clock and then use her legs to tell the time. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I feel sitting like this. But very okay, interesting. So what is she doing? I have she's a problem. A dresser she's and it's ugly like this. And Pine she's green. And she's wow. Thank you. So I gave you five. Okay, here we are. It's color analysis day. Can I serve your little gummies right here? Là, c'est pour vous présenter la le motif mm -hmm. tel qu'il mm -hmm. se présente sur un lait, hein, c'est-à-dire qu'il fait 53 de large mm -hmm. et les rouleaux font 10 mètres de long. Comme ça, vous pouvez voir un mm -hmm. peu la répétition du oh, motif. Joli. Et donc ça, c'est un papier peint qu'on décline dans beaucoup joli. de couleurs. Mm. Très joli. Wow. Je peux bien imaginer ça dans une chambre. Alors, toutes les couleurs. Voilà, on a plein, on a énormément de couleurs et je trouve que ce serait intéressant euh, de travailler aussi avec les papiers peints archivés. Mmh, mmh. mmh. Ça me donne euh, Marie-Antoinette un peu avec le oui. petit euh, ouais. bao. Et donc mmh. le Saint-Antoine, donc celui-ci, hein, celui que je vous montre, ça correspond aux échantillons que je vous ai apportés. Ça, c'est un des coloris. Ah, ça, c'est la collection actuelle. Ah, d'accord. Donc, ça, c'est même, le même. C'est le même motif. J'aime bien. En fait, ce sont, des, des, ce sont des, 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 des échantillons. Donc, en fait, ce sont des coupes mm -hmm. qui font partie d'un rouleau. D'accord. C'est pour ça que oui, je, je trouvais ça intéressant de vous montrer. Des oui, 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 oui. Ça fait bien. bien le. Mais lorsque vous passerez me voir aussi mm. à, à Paris, je vous montrerai les, les d'autres. This would be so beautiful in a bedroom. I love it, yeah.
in the can you Beautiful. turn the back of it so we can see the pattern so that's, that's that's it right right yeah oh, so it it's beautiful this is magnificent aussi j'aime bien la subtilité subtilité oui on sait pas the travail Les deux ensemble sont mm -hmm. C'est beau aussi, hein. C'est des nuances vraiment qu'on trouve dans la pièce. Je pense que tu peux mettre ça dans l'intérieur et les shutters. Je vous montre d'abord le petit green, proche de la pierre. Donc vous essayez de faire abstraction du bleu. C'est presque la même couleur que la, la pierre. Mm -hmm. Vous voyez qu'il est plus vert. Oui, mm -hmm. yeah, that's more natural, it's more like. Je pense. Mm -hmm. oui. With the brown and the gray. Je pense que ça c'est un peu trop coloré. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Et en fait, quand on place une couleur à l'extérieur, c'est bien de s'inspirer un peu de l'environnement. Enfin, c'est important mm -hmm. de s'inspirer de l'environnement. Mm -hmm. Et le vitigrine, c'est une teinte qu'on a déjà dehors. Mm -hmm. It's the day after the color consultation meeting. Mm -hmm. Julia is talking to the wonderful Samantha from Paris at Fair and Ball. They have all the same interests. <laughs> like she loves the movie Marie Antoinette by Sofia Coppola, which is amazing that a, a real interior designer from Paris loves that movie because that's such a like American take on France. Mm -hmm. You know, this like fantasy, like indie. And she went to see her talk in Paris I'm like, this woman is amazing. She also loves Italy, which I love the colors of Italy. And I think loving Italy is very appropriate because so much of French decor was taken from the Italian Renaissance. So to have that kind of Italian influence on French design is like the perfect balance for this chateau. And I think the former owners really understood that too because they traveled a lot to Italy and they based the entire gardens on Florentine gardens. So I'm like, she's kind of hitting like all of the, the sweet spots for me and I think for the project. We're towards the end of the stages of demolition where the main swimming pool area has mostly been excavated. And so the next step is to, is to excavate for the spa, which is relatively small. Uh, but in the process, fortunately, the demolition guys are quite experienced and careful. They were going quite gently and found a pipe, a large pipe, that transfers fuel oil, that is heating oil, from the spout on the road for, for deliveries mm. all the way to the other end of the chateau. It's not something we can move, so we have the choice of moving the spa or moving the pipe. So we're, <laughs> we're looking at moving the spa. <laughs> Fortunately, it's symmetric, so we think we can just put it on the other side and everything will be fine. Um, this kind of thing is somewhat expected. We were worried about utilities in that whole area. So if this is the worst of it, maybe we're in good shape. Yeah, we're looking for reinforcements. What are you, what are you up to today? What are you up to today? Back to the old saddle on the saddle again. No? 
That's a that's two references mixed. <laughs> on the road again. He's on the road and back, back on in the saddle, the saddle right. again. Yes. Yeah. Lifting heavy things, moving here from there, here to there. How are you using the power of our friends? How are your friends doing? <laughs> They're regretting they came. So <laughs> don't come and visit us before events because it's going to be bad. We're going to put you to work. Oh yeah, they're working inside. It's been very yeah, cute. Yeah. So okay. They are. Today is a, a big, big help day because it's Mondays. Mondays at the shop. I know. Do you want more pet lamps? We should buy some more. <laughs> it's like so. Like, of course, my head is illuminating in front of me. <laughs> so we're in the tower room. It's incredibly dusty. Maruka's painting the closet next door. I mean, Penelope is. Uh oh, I should go help you. But here we are, changing, making some changes. Do, do, do. Okay, we're bringing down the. Oh, oh you can see all the cardboard. dust coming out. Sorry. Gross. Yeah, it's fine. Just cardboard. Amazing. Oof. I know. Things are not what they seem. No. Thank you. What okay, the stones, they're real. The stones are real, yes. They're real. This is not a conspiracy, people. This is a real chateau. We conspired together. <laughs> So we're bringing down the curtains to give them a big cleaning, and now we're finding that it's quite the, uh, as we would say, janky mechanism. <laughs> it's very dusty. And dusty. All right, today we're going to try on a very special color. This is the for our fair and bold consultant. Our color consultant recommended this very strongly for our shutters. So and see what it's like. This was very special people yesterday who gave us a sample. So we didn't have to wait until we go to Paris. Next week, we're getting a bit of a head start. That's really yeah. gray on camera. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know. And then white. Close her eyes and turn her around here. Catch her here and then bring her here and let her see it. Okay, I kind of love it, but I also am very unsure. Okay. Don't look. Okay. Close your eyes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn this here. Okay. Okay. Oh. For the shutters. Yeah. You can like kind of squint so it replaces the blue shutter completely. It looks like the walls. Yeah, it does look at the walls. But it looks quite deep, right? Like deeper than the paper. It's a very nice right? door. Where did you get this? Uh, a wardrobe. <laughs> Wow. This is our area. Her rain plan. Wow. Can't you imagine it like completely oh, like like if you really block the blue? It's it's really pretty, right? Yeah, it is pretty. Yeah. And then we'll get here with the the caramel and the terracotta and the deep green, and then you can imagine the pops of like olive or teal hmm. in pops in pots. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's the neutral. To Paris, 6 a.m. for color consultation. This is not Julia's preferred waking hour, but it is cheaper to travel in the morning. Hotel de la Marine, which is right behind me, which is a government building, and they did a huge renovation for years, and it opened last year, and it's an incredible example of 18th century art and architecture. And our color consultant from Faro and Ball actually hugely suggested that Carolina and I come up and take a look at it before we started to pick wallpaper and color, 
to really like ground ourselves in the aesthetic and example of like newly renovated uh, reference to that era. So we are hoping to be blown away and then we're gonna go visit her at the Pharaoh and Buff showroom tomorrow and tell her what we thought and then look at some wallpaper and paint. Let's go. It's making me want to burn it all over the ground. So it's amazing. It's amazing. The first part of the Pharaoh and Ball color consultation involved um, one of their main color consultants coming down from Paris on the train and actually spending the whole day with us here at the Chateau. So we were very lucky to be assigned Samantha, who is one of the senior color consultants at Pharaoh and Ball Paris. She's worked there for 20 years and she showed up bright and early uh, a few weeks ago and we spent seven hours here in the Chateau together. Uh, doing a complete tour of the Chateau and Gardens, kind of getting her a, a global vision of what the property is like. And then we focused very closely on the East Wing renovations and the Central Wing renovations to give her an idea of the upcoming work. And um, she did a lot of listening and she really works very much from a sense of global vision, global theme and idea of the project, and then kind of slowly hones in on specifics, colors, you know, specific um, decisions that need to be made. And in fact, she's helped us very much focus more on the themes and the, the mission of our project, really help link them to every single interior design choice. Um, so by the end of that first day, we had, she went back up to Paris and we had just really opened Pandora's box of possibilities together. And she then invited us up to Paris the next week to go visit Hotel de la Marine, which is a fabulous example of 18th century interior design. And then to visit her at the Pharaoh and Ball showroom and look at what wallpapers and paints could possibly achieve some of our vision that we had uh, mapped out together. Good. How's it going? Good. I think we finally started to see some like palette happening here, maybe for the rooms, just like to start getting an idea of what it could be. Because I have a hard time imagining things all together, like yeah. all the rooms and a hallway and So Samantha is doing an incredible job showing us so various color palettes, various ideas for the wallpaper. So We've been here for about so an hour and a half. Oh, that's beautiful. We're actually impressed with the Ferrer and Ball wallpaper. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's hand painted. They call it artisanal wallpaper. And I can see why. By the end of that second meeting with her at the showroom, 
we had done so much conceptual work, so much creative work that we actually found our guiding theme for the entire chateau and the entire uh, interior design kind of choice that will give us logic and structure about how to develop each of the, the wings, each of the floors, and each of the phases. We kind of did rough draft decisions, and we were sort of playing with the idea of 18th century in the top three rooms above me here on the first floor that will be guest rooms, and then this grand salon, all being very 18th century inspired. We started to discuss um, the movie Marie Antoinette by Sofia Coppola, because that sort of came up as a reference for color, um, kind of macaroon inspired palette with some punches of more vibrant color in there. We very much admired a fresh approach to a very historic subject. And I think that film has really set the tone for a lot of series that are coming out now, such as Bridgerton or um, The New Persuasion and a whole bunch of other films that kind of reprise literary classics and make, you know, choose very historic settings and very beautiful period set design, but they add these elements of freshness and modernity that help it connect to modern audiences. And so I think I've always admired that film for doing that and I've seen that really influenced, um, influencing the period piece trends of today. And so Samantha really started playing with that idea and started picking colors and picking very historically accurate wallpapers and then choosing a paint color that's a bit more fun and a bit more bold. And we really started to get excited about the, the possibilities of refreshing these rooms, bringing back this sense of newness and um, play and fun, even while respecting entirely how historic and beautiful they really are. It's super exciting. Um, and we're gonna see how that starts to come out in, in our individual choices. And we hope to start working with her more closely on our first phase of the East Wing and um, really get into the details. Huh? So this is Biddy Green, now painted with the actual finish. And, um, We've been testing it in different lights, in different scenarios. I really like putting it somewhere over here. Of course, it's somewhat hard to imagine, but you know, you can see the contrast between the um, and this and this, and then if you really like cover this, <laughs> you can kind of imagine it. Hmm. I mean, I like it. I do like it. Let me. I love it. Like, I'll come show it to you over here. It's such a lovely neutral with just a hint of green, so it references the landscape. But um, it really is neutral, so when you put it against like beautiful details, like these terracotta pots, for instance, and this beautiful um, yellow, it, it like just allows bolder colors to really pop. Mm. It's not trying to take anything away from them whatsoever. It's just really functioning as a beautiful neutral backdrop. And we have so many flowers and plants and textures going on, including the, the color of the stone itself and the wood, that it, it's just kind of like, just kind of blends in. Whereas right now, the sky blue shutters are like, look at me, look at me, I'm here. And you have to almost mentally erase them to be able to see all of this beautiful, you know, sculpture. And there's also just like a, they love to say this in French, like a sombreness, like somberness about the facades. Like they're quite serious and they're from the middle ages and then from the Renaissance. So 
I think the happy, cute shutters are somewhat conflicting with that overall look. And this would keep like the, the cuteness of the shutter, but make it more, I think a little more elegant and restrained and in keeping with the historicness of the, the facade. Hello. Hi. Who are our guests this, these past few weeks? Oh, they're very, very special guests. Um, foremost is my oldest guest who is in her 70s and she was our cleaning lady. I met her when I was pregnant with Julia and she's become a friend and she helped me raise my kids and she gave me a lot of tips. Her name is Clara and she lives in Tijuana now and she has seven children and 22 grandchildren and I think 10, 10 grand great grandchildren yeah. and she's 77 and she came all the way from San Diego they flew from Los Angeles actually with her daughter and then with them is my very good friend Sharon Christensen who we've been friends since our kids were little but really closer when they were in high school so all three of them are here. It's a little bit hard because I'm speaking Spanish to Clara and Esther, her daughter, and I'm speaking in English to Sharon. And then I have to switch to French a little bit at the store, so I get very confused. And I end up saying buenos dias when I want to say bonjour or thank you and to merci. So it's been very confusing and because of that exhausting, but it's really lovely having them they love the chateau, uh, Clara, and especially never, never, never dreamt of going to France. And she absolutely loves it, loves the greenery, um, the people, the life, and she says she's gonna stay here forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it's really, really nice to connect to people that we've known. For me, particularly, I'm, I have new friends, which I'm very, very grateful for, but having old friends really joins my life, you know, the, the past with the present, and they get to see where I live, and they say even though they see videos or whatever, it's never the same as being here. And, um, and we're very excited about the season coming. Um, we're expecting six, I think, different workshops, which are going to be really fabulous. We're really looking forward to it because each is a different flavor altogether. And because they're one month apart from each other, we could put all our energy into creating the new event for the people that are coming and really cater to them and to that experience that they're going to have. And so right before, so my sister came that was really lovely and that was just the two of us which was nice and we got to travel together the weather has been very very nice for them because when it's cold it's cold and who's coming next week and next week is the grand finale it's going to be carolina's parents who have not been here together her father was here but i've met them once at a restaurant we sat down together we talked for about an hour or so and that's it and we see each other through video so that's going to be very special especially i think for carolina to have her family here and for us to get to know them before the big wedding <laughs> <laughs> we don't know when that's happening but yeah Très bien.